On Friday, October 21st, the Biotech expansion was released. The week Biotech was released, the new expansion was number 5 top seller on Steam. It competed with games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Persona 5 Royal. Biotech was a huge success, at least in sales. This expansion adds three major features, children and reproduction, controllable mechanoids, genetic modification. All of these three new systems could have been a DLC by itself, but the devs made it into one. Let's talk about children. For children, they developed a system that allows them to age at a faster rate than adults. A normal child ages four times as fast as adults. This could be seen as immersion breaking, but personally, I never noticed a difference. A child in a growth mat, however, ages 20 times as fast compared to other children. They added many different ways in obtaining children. The obvious one is to naturally impregnate a female pawn. After 18 days, she goes into labor and a baby will pop out. The pawn will start to become fertile after 14 years old and will slowly decline until 50 for females and 90 for males. You can also extract an ovum from a female pawn and have it fertilized by a male pawn to produce an embryo. You can implant an embryo into a female pawn to create a pregnancy or implant it into a growth bat. In a growth bat, the birth of a child is 9 days instead of 18. There's also a system for obtaining traits and passions. In the needs tab, the child would want to do an activity like sky dreaming, radio talking, floor drawing, nature running, work watching, and lesson taking. These will be automatically fulfilled whenever the schedule is set to recreation. When they fulfill a lot of those activities, their growth tier will go up. The higher the growth tier, the more traits and passions you can choose at ages 7, 10, and 13. You can also kidnap and purchase children, which honestly seems like a better option. You can also receive them as rewards. Now let's talk about mechanoids. This feature adds several new mechanoids that actually help the player. There are lifters, constructoid, Fabricer, Agrihand, Clean Sweeper, Paramedic, Tunneler, Militor, Scorcher, Tesseron, Legionary, Centurion, Diabolus, and a War Queen. They do not eat and they do not feel mood or pain. You will first need a pawn to be a mechanator to be able to control, repair, and create the mechanoids. You can also craft these by unlocking the mech tech path in your research bench and having the required materials. For the simple mechs like Lifters, Constructoids, Militors, and Agrihand, you'll need a basic subcore which can be crafted at a subcore encoder. For standard mechs like Lancers, Clean Sweepers, Scythers, Scorchers, Tunnelers, and Pikeman, you'll need a standard subcore. You'll need a pawn to basically get your brain scanned, and this reduces consciousness and manipulation by 75% and causes a negative 8 mood penalty. For more complex mechanoids like the Centurion, Paramedic, Diabolus, Fabricer, Legionary, Tesseron, and the War Queen, you'll need a high subcore. It requires a subcore rip scanner which will destroy a pawn's brain to produce a subcore. To be able to get the complex mechanoid research, you will need to defeat Diabolus, Warkeen, and Apocritin in that same order. Of course, there's a lot more I can explain and talk about like pollution, but for the sake of time, let's move on to gene modification. This is the final feature of the biotech DLC. There are a lot of genes, so many in fact that I'm not going to name all of them in this video for the sake of time. However, here are some of my favorites. Deathless. Carriers of this gene have archites in the blood which will sustain the life process no matter what. As long as the brain remains intact, a carrier of this gene will never die. Staggeringly ugly. Carriers of this gene have misshapen, asymmetrical facer features and blotchy skin. They're hard to look at. Never sleep. Carriers of this gene have a unique metabolic process which allows clusters of neurons to sleep while the rest of the brain stays awake. They never need to sleep. Cat ears. Carriers of this gene have cat-like ears. Each gene has a number of complexity and metabolism. Positive genes like beautiful or never sleep decrease metabolism which means that they'll need to eat more. This caps out at 250% or negative 5 metabolism. Negative genes like staggeringly ugly increase metabolism. It caps out at 50% but you can have a metabolism higher than 5. All genes have a number of complexities. The more complexity a pawn has, the longer it takes for them to grow their genes back. This means that although you can make a pawn never die, never sleep, and never get addicted to drugs, you'll need to balance it out with negative genes. To obtain these genes, you can customize it at the start or obtain it by researching xenogenetics. This gives you a gene extractor gene bank, and gene assembler. The names are pretty self-explanatory, but basically, you can extract genes from others. After you extract a random gene, it will take time to regrow the genes. If you extract the genes from the same person again while their genes are growing, it will kill them. Afterwards, you can store the gene in the gene bank and create a combination of genes that you want and give it to your pawns. This can create a lot of interesting combination of pawns. It even has abilities like fire spoon and acid spray. There are xenohumans. These are probably the ones that you'll extract your genes from. That was a basic summary of all the features for biotech. There are a lot of things I missed or I didn't talk about, so I may have lacked some critical information. Compared to ideology and royalty, this DLC has a lot more contact packed into it. Of course, I do feel like ideology has more of a complex system than biotech, but from the sheer amount of fun content this adds, I would call this the greatest RimWorld update yet.